Hey everyone, welcome back to the Goff House. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jenny and today, guess what? I'm canning. Odd for me, I know. Anywho, we are doing another meal starter. Today, I am canning up some chicken marsala. So good, it's gonna be so easy to just bowl up some spaghetti noodles and thicken it up a little bit and pour it over the top and you've got chicken marsala. And then your chicken will be evenly distributed with your pasta. Yum, and ready in minutes. How long does it take to boil pasta? That will be the length of time to make your meal. Anywho, let's get started. First thing I wanna do is make the broth. I have 12 cups of chicken broth here. Um, I'm using, of course, the Nor Powder Bullion. You can use regular chicken broth if you prefer. It's your choice. I am putting in here two cups of Marcella wine. Now, there is no replacement for Marcella wine. So if you don't like wine, you don't like to cook for, with wine, you don't like to drink wine, this is not the recipe for you. Since this is chicken Marcella, it needs the Marcella wine. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to get this going. I have 12 cloves of garlic here. I'm making six, six quarts of um, chicken marsala. I'm cutting it down today just because I wanted to save a couple pieces of chicken for dinner. When I write the recipe for you, I'm going to do it for... Oh, I put too much broth in here too. <laughs> I forgot I was cutting it down one. When I write this recipe for you, I will um, put directions in for seven quarts. I am putting in two teaspoons of dried parsley. If you have some fresh herbs in your garden and you'd like to use those, you can definitely do that. I am putting in one teaspoon of dried thyme. I'm putting in one teaspoon of garlic powder. I like to use both. And I'm gonna use a tablespoon of onion powder, which is three teaspoons. You want a good flavorful broth. Because again, when you are making this, you kind of want it to concentrate in and get into your chicken. All right, lid on. I'm going to bring this to a boil, then I'm going to turn it down and let it simmer for at least 10 minutes or until we're ready to go. In the meantime, let's get chopping. Okay, I just chopped or sliced one pound of cremini mushrooms, the baby bellas, and I do them in a little bit thicker slices. So you can chop them however you like. One pound of mushrooms. I am now going to chop two yellow onions. Normally for this dish, I use shallots, but unfortunately I'm out of them, so I am using onion today. Um, you can do it in big dice, medium dice, small dice, however you like your onion. That guy didn't even get chopped. No matter. This is just a, a quick this is actually a pretty quick canning project, other than the, the processing time, of course, because it's meat. I love chicken marsala. And normally when you make it, you, you brown your chicken with a little bit of flour so it thickens up the um, sauce just slightly. Because we never want a thick sauce, but we don't want a um, super thin watery sauce either. So when we get to the point of I open up a jar, I'll show you how I thicken it slightly. So for this, you're going to want about a pound and a quarter of chicken per jar. All 
All right, we're making good time. The water is, or broth is not even boiling yet. Okay, I'm gonna save this. I got onions under it. And I'm gonna get started with my chicken. I always like to cut out the weird pieces. <laughs> and yes, uh, before you worry about it, I do save them. I do cook those up. The dogs love them. Okay. These are nice big chicken breasts too. I sharpen this, I run it through my radius sharpener before every use. That way every time I cut meat, it's sharp. Guess I should cut that off. Because it's not letting my chicken separate. Hopefully, I'm sure you can't see it. <laughs> that thing in the way. Sometimes there's that little bone left in the top too. I have my canner filled with water and it is simmering. It's windy out today and uh, very cloudy and we have 44% humidity um, waiting for monsoon rain. And of course, no rain in sight, 0% chance of rain, but the humidity is terrible. So now I'm going to turn on my canner and make it more humid. <laughs> I really want to go in my, um, my sewing room and quilt today. So I'm trying to get this in the canner as fast as I can so I can go in there and do that. I have started um, an autumn quilt and so it's called Autumnville. The pattern is by uh, Camille Ross Kelly and I really, it's so cute, oh my gosh but there's a lot of pieces to it. And I'll tell you what, my back aches after standing over my cutting table, cutting out all the pieces, all the squares. <laughs> but it is fun and I can't wait till it's done. And then I, of course, I got my uh, pattern that I ordered in the mail for a regular um, everyday quilt for my bedroom. Okay, 
Okay, I'm gonna go grab the other chicken. I have not even eaten today yet, and it is like noon on a Friday. By the time you see this, it's probably going to be uh, next week, but this is the Friday before 4th of July. So, um, yeah. Anyway, I lost my train of thought and forgot what I was saying. I do that all the time. Menopause brain. <laughs> Okay. So anyway, quilting, um, I got, I decided while I was waiting for my other stuff in the mail to start this Autumnville quilt. And, uh, and before I even realized how big it was, it's like a 90 by 90. So uh, that's a pretty good size quilt. These, these quart jars would feed about two people. I'm using a, about one chicken breast Actually, I think I'm going to do two, or not two, I'm sorry, I'm going to cut up one extra chicken breast and divide it between the jars, because there's some jars that don't have as much, the chicken breast wasn't as big, but if you have a large chicken breast, about a large chicken breast per jar, you can stretch it if you need to feed more people than two, but basically with one chicken breast, you're going to feed about two people, and then the sauce. Okay, so these guys don't have quite as much on that one. But I want to save room for all that um, onion and mushroom. Yum. I am going to put mushrooms and onions in. These you're probably going to need to pack in and they will shrink during the canning process. Also, your mushrooms are going to absorb some, um, some liquid. Mushrooms. Now the onions. I'm gonna need a need a packer downer. Everything shrinks um, during the canning process, so if you're worried about it being too full, it's totally gonna shrink in the in the canner. All the onions, all the mushrooms, the chicken. This, oh, you saw me cut them up, two large onions. <laughs> Losing my train of thought today. I'm ready to just go in my sewing room and hang out. making a big oniony mess. Okay, I'm gonna wipe down my area really quick and get a towel down so that we can fill these with hot liquid. Okay, I am filling the jars. The camera did not flip on for the first one. I am filling the jars with broth two one inch headspace. Got 
gotta get down there and make sure I got my one inch. <laughs> And get in there and dip bubble. And of course, more. Smells really good in here, just an FYI. And I saved a couple pieces of chicken out so I can make dinner. It's a not good for you dinner night. I'm totally going to fry those pieces of chicken. <laughs> and then I'm totally making milk gravy out of the pan drippings. <laughs> So no gourmet meal here, all country meal today. I, I ate that a lot growing up, oh my gosh. That was one of my favorites my grandma used to make. Milk gravy we called it, what do you guys call it? Did you call it country gravy, pan gravy? You know it's brown. So when you fry your pork chops, your fried chicken, and then you make your, use the pan drippings and the frond from the bottom of the pan. And you put in your flour, make a room, put your flour, or put your milk in, just pure milk. Uh, we always called it milk gravy. <laughs> I don't know what y'all call it, but Michigan milk gravy. Chicken will make some um, liquid as well, so. I'm hoping my uh, mushrooms don't drink it all up. <laughs> I know they're gonna absorb some of it. Now, if you have extra liquid left over, I have a lot of people ask, you know, what do you do with extra liquid? Can you can it? You sure can. If you want to, if you have enough that you want to put it in a quart jar and can it, or even a pint jar and can it along with, and you got the room, fine. Um, a lot of times I save it, use it for rice. Um, I do make a lot of soups in this house. Soup is one of my very favorite things to eat. Um, comforting, you know. And um, I eat it even during the summer. So a lot of times if I have a little bit left over, I will throw something, throw some vegetables in it and call it lunch. Okay, I have a little bit of white vinegar I'm going to clean the rims with. And I have my lids sitting right here dry. I do not put hot water in them for pressure canning, only water bath canning. Fingertip tight. And I usually back off and then redo it just in case so that I can make for sure that they are fingertip tight. Um, <laughs> I once just, I think you saw my mustard video. I thought it was on there and my screw band was not on there correctly and I got mustard all over my canner. So there you go. 
So I'm trying to exercise a little more being careful. <laughs> All right, everybody's in the hot tub. Okay. I am going to put her on lockdown. Doing my locks across from each other, and I just put them on just till they're on. Try to make sure it's a little even. And, okay. And then I take a towel and lock her down really good. Yep, my canner's a she. <laughs> okay. I am now going to take her from low to between six and five. The high is over here. I never bring it up to temperature fast on high. Um, you get more siphoning from your jars that way. So, as soon as this starts to come up a little bit, it'll start venting. When you start seeing the steam come out of the pet cock there, and it is a really steaming like a freight train, not a light little steam, you want it really steaming like a freight train, then you want to set your timer and time that process for 10 minutes. After that 10 minutes, whoop, there it is, I am going to put my weight on at 15 pounds of pressure as I am at 1100 foot elevation. You're going to want to put your weight on according to your area. Or if you've got a Miro or a Presto, you're going to want to follow your canner directions. Then, as soon as my pressure comes up to 15 pounds of pressure, I then adjust my heat down further. I can get it all the way down to a 3. It will hold steady. And as soon as it comes up to the 15 pounds of pressure, that is when I set my timer for 90 minutes. Quartz will process 90 minutes. Pints will process 75 minutes. So I'll see you in a few hours when we're ready to come out of the canner. All right, these guys are done and out of the canner. And it's been a little while, so they have settled down. And as you can see, the mushrooms have absorbed some of the liquid, which I kind of thought I did, but that's okay. Um, they all sealed perfectly fine. I can't wait to crack one of these open, but as usual, when I do crack one open, I will definitely bring you along for it. All right, that is all there is to the Easy Chicken Marcella. It is actually quick to get ready to can, and then your canning time, super easy. You gotta try this one. But as always, I will bring you along when I open the first jar and show you what we think of it, and if I needed to add anything to it, how I'm gonna prepare it. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot, and I sure do appreciate your support. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook, and you can visit my blog for all of my recipes at JennyGoff.com, including this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.